Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to explore pH and leather. What? I know, it's a very obscure topic. However, it affects everybody that works with leather and cleans and conditions. So we're going to take a look at what is pH and how it actually impacts the leather fibers. We're going to look at how it relates to cleaners and conditioners. And then lastly, we're going to let you know which are good choices for cleaners and conditioners so you can make your own choice in terms of what works well for you and what you want to achieve. So with that, let's dive right in. So pH sounds nerdy and scientific. Boo! Actually, it's awesome. <laughs> so pH stands for the potential of hydrogen and it measures how much hydrogen which is an acid, H+, and hydroxyl, OH-, a base, are in a solution. You're going to be able to forget most of that in just a second. But what that means is that when items that have a different pH come into contact, it could be our skin and leather, it could be a cleaner and leather, it could be pretty much anything, because most things have a pH to them, when they come into contact, they try to neutralize each other and essentially create a balance between the two. It's always looking for that balance. And when an acid comes in contact with a base, it produces salt and water. And what can damage leather? Salt and water. You got it. So this is why it's so important because most cleaners, most conditioners have a pH, leather has a pH, and there is likely damage happening based on what products are being used. So that is why it's important. And it's also so rarely talked about. So we figured it would be helpful and pretty cool, you know, to kind of dive into this a bit with you and show you exactly why that matters and what choices you can make based on that. So the pH scale, it's going to be helpful to get used to this. It's essentially a scale that runs from one to 14. Um, seven in the middle is a neutral. Anything to the left is considered acidic and anything to the right is considered basic. That's also important to know this is what's called a logarithmic scale. So again, you could forget that soon too, but the idea is that if this goes down, you know, a something that is a five is acidic versus something that's a four, the four is going to be 10 times more acidic than the five. And that goes down the list. So the three is going to be 100 times more acidic than the five. So essentially, the further away you go, the way higher the acidic nature of that substance is or the basic you know, alkaline nature of that substance is. That's important because um, we'll talk more about it. But essentially, that's why using something like a bleach is going to be way worse than using something like a baking soda even if both may not be great. And well, again, we'll explain more about that in just a second. So what does this all mean? We're gonna solve that for you and make it really easy. Leather has a pH of around 4.5 to five. And so that's gonna be its sweet spot where it feels comfortable um, and anything above or below may you know, affect it. But 4.5 to five is generally you know, leather's pH. And so when we are looking at using cleaners and conditioners, you know, we want to find something that is either neutral or around that 4.5 to 5. And that way when they combine, it's not going to create that salt and that water and start to break down the fibers. So let's use a few examples. Um, if we look at, you know, something like baking soda. Here's a typical baking soda and we use it. It's great for cleaning so many things. However, leather may not be one of them because baking soda has a pH you know, of around nine. And so when we match that up with the leathers, you know, we'll say five, it's going to be pretty far off. Um, so it may not be the most ideal cleaner for it. Another one that people use in terms of conditioners are going to be olive oil. Now, there are other reasons why we wouldn't want to use olive oil, but another one is that olive oil is going to be around a two. 
and its overall acidity, which is a lot lower than leathers, you know, 4.5 to 5. So those are just a few different examples that we can look at some others, such as, you know, we've got our, you know, mink oil liquid. That and neat's foot oil is going to be around our, you know, 6 range. And here we've got some neat foot oil as well. So you've probably seen these, you're probably very familiar with them. And um, that's where they fall kind of on that range. And then there are some other ones that you may come across, you know, pretty frequently um, that we see recommended, even though in reality, they're not that great for the leather. And that's going to be things like, um, you know, your hand soaps, typical, you can use it you know, in restrooms or even, you know, some dish soaps, they're gonna be around a nine on our pH scale. So again, pretty big jump between leathers five and the hand soaps nine. And another one that is popular that we find, even though we probably shouldn't, vinegar. And vinegar is gonna be a three. And so that's gonna be, again, a little more acidic than our typical leather. And then another popular one, dun -da dum saddle soap. Now this is, you know, super popular in a lot of ways for a lot of things. But if we look, it's gonna be around a 10 on our uh, pH scale. And so if that's a 10 or leather's a five, that's gonna be quite a big difference. And then, but you'll say, hey, saddle soap, you know, it works great. And, you know, it's worked well for years and things like that. And so here's where, you know, thinking for yourself really begins to make a difference. So saddle soap isn't just one item. Um, it's got other, you know, elements put in there, moisturizers, conditioners, fats, oils, and also some soap, you know, depending on the formulation and something to help clean that leather. And so when that goes into the leather, what it essentially does, it's going to create that pH reaction deep in the fibers. And then because of what else is in the saddle soap, it's going to coat it and essentially create a protective barrier over those damaged fibers. So it's going to be even tougher in the future to be able to condition them, to clean them, and even repair them if you need. And so, okay, we've been using saddle soap for years and it's great. And so it may be. And this is where the decision comes into what you're trying to do. Um, if you've got a leather item that you're going to use really hard for a year or two, you know it's going to wear out, it's going to serve you well, you could put pretty much anything you want on that because it's not going to, you know, be intended to last forever. So for that particular case and that use, that may be a great option. Um, if you've got something that, you know, you want to care for, you know, for years, decades, maybe even centuries, that's when those uh, pH reactions are especially going to start to become damaging over that time frame. Um, it will begin when that reaction occurs, though it'll, you know, like you'll probably see it more and more as time goes on. So that's when it becomes a, it's a genuinely personal preference. You know, this isn't like a, oh, never use any of these things ever. Um, there are other reasons why you wouldn't want to use some of these, you know, such as, you know, vinegar, um, you know, or even bleach or things like that. But that's for another time. Um, it all mainly comes down to, you know, what you're comfortable with and the risks that you're willing to take with that leather. Uh, for some things, it's not going to matter and some things it will. So it, it's really just, you know, educate yourself on the impacts of those choices and then basically choose whatever works best, you know, for what you're trying to do as it, as it is in most cases for most things. So, um, that's essentially how you know, pH impacts the leather. Um, depending on the cleaner and the conditioner that is being used, that variance in the pH can create, um, you know, a lot of damage over time, even if it's invisible at first, or even if it's being masked by, you know, the elements in the conditioners or, you know, things like that. Um, so something very, very critical and key to keep in mind. And um, so what do you do? Right, so now we know this information, we got all these things. Um, essentially look for cleaners and conditioners that are pH neutral or that are made for leather. And often the quality leather cleaners and conditioners 
um, that are specifically made for leather are going to be um, pH balanced, you know, for that leather range, or they're going to be pH neutral, which won't have as much of an effect, you know, as something that's more acidic or more basic. So it's essentially that. Um, if you have something you really want to care for, um, find something that is a pH balanced cleaner um, and, and conditioner, and then that way the leather that you got, you know, in your item will look good and perform really well um, for a long time to come. So that's that. Um, the amazing world of pH. I think we did okay. We didn't get too too nerdy in that. And um, so this page, uh, I'll put it up on the website. You'll have the link below that you can print it out if you'll find it helpful to have around and on hand. And uh, if you have questions, let us know. And uh, until next time, stay pH balanced and keep crafting.